Hey guys, welcome to a new video. It's time for a board release again. Actually, we're going to talk a little bit about several upcoming releases and a first in the series that is releasing today, the Diff Solo, a long distance solution for adjustable LEDs. For as long as we've all been playing with addressable LEDs, the distance these LEDs were from your controller, be that an ESP32 or Queen LED DIG controller, has always been a much discussed topic. While the Quinn LED DIG boards have special circuits on the board to try and get the data signal to go as far as possible, generally we still don't advise to make your data lines too long. In practice, with the Quinn LED DIG boards, 5 meters or 16 feet has always worked fine, and up to 10 meters or 32 feet has mostly worked okay. Beyond that though, it's been everyone's guess, and that's partly because we are stretching the type of signaling used well beyond its designed limits. Our, uh, our commonly used addressable LEDs use something that is known as single-ended data signaling. There is a single wire that carries the data signal and it is combined with ground to make a zero or a one and transmit the data that way. This type of signal is however fairly weak, especially against outside interference. So as the data line becomes longer, the chance your data signal will degrade becomes higher. Long ago, they already thought of a different type of signaling for this, and that is known as differential signaling. Instead of using a single wire, it uses two wires, and the data signal isn't based off of the ground. Instead, it uses some sort of uh, plus minus approach between the two wires. Hence the name differential, and this makes it much more robust against outside influence and distance. Our commonly used Ethernet networking is, for instance, also based on this type of signaling. Quick note, however, None of the Quinn LED diff products we're going to be talking about are compatible with Ethernet switches, network cards, or anything of the sort. Keep that in mind. So this different type of signaling is much better at long distances, but our controllers and LEDs basically don't speak the same language. That's where the new Quinn LED diff boards come in. Each of the three systems I will be releasing is based on a sender and receiver board. The sender board takes in your data signal from your controller or even LEDs, converts it and then sends it over a, uh, a standard UTP cable. Here's a very small one, but up to 500 meter or 1600 feet, and then ends up in a receiver board. This receiver board transforms the signal back to a normal type signal, throws it through a level shifter and data resistor, to which you then connect your LEDs, and voila, you can now run up to 500 meter or 1600 feet of cable between your controller and where you want to run the LEDs. Now, as I just mentioned, there are going to be three different series of boards within the Quinn LED Diff lineup. The Quinn LED Diff solo boards, which are releasing today, then later the Diff Advanced or ADV series, which stands for advanced. This includes some more advanced features such as wider voltage support, auto reset fuses, daisy chaining, and a few more tricks I'll explain in that future video. And last, there will be the Quinn LED Diff Power Series, which is nicknamed Power Diff. Next to transporting data, that will also transport power over the UTP cable to your LEDs and convert it to 5 volt, 12 volt, or whatever you need there, so you just have to run a single Cat5e UDP cable and you are done for data and power. But, but that's all future talk, although I have already shown off prototypes in the live streams. If you haven't attended the live stream before, come check it out sometimes. So today is the release of the simplest version in that sense. The Quinn LED Diff Solo Solution is really meant for getting data signaling to where it needs to go easily and effectively without any extra features really. Situations it excels at and is the perfect fit for are for instance, 
long distance data lines or LED gap bridging. If you have an LED strip there and an LED strip there and there's five or 10 meters in between that, you can use a sender and receiver board and bridge that distance. Extra data injections. Often if you're running 10 meters or 20 meters of LED strip and you're running 60 LEDs per meter, you'll run out of the LED amount you can run on a single channel and you have to run a second or a third channel even. Now often these will be 10 or 20 meters away so then you can again use a diff solo board to get the LED data signal to where it needs to go. Another situation is if you have a noisy environment, for instance, AC cables are running along the route of the data signal. The differential signal is much more robust against this than the normal type signal. Or you have a hard to reach location where you don't want to have a programmable controller if that ever fails or software goes wrong, you put in one of these dumb receiver boards and then you never have to worry about that because you can put the controller in spot you can easily reach. So there's various scenarios where these uh, type of long distance solutions, well, can be a solution. Then specifically more about the diff solo, it is a one-to-one -one board solution and always sold as a pair, a sender and receiver board. One of the unique selling points or advantages these have versus the other boards in the lineup is that they are by far the smallest and cheapest boards. You will be able to buy a pair of boards for $14.99. A little bit more about the boards themselves then. The Diff Solo sender is 5 volt to 12 volt compatible and has terminals to accept positive, data and ground. Next to that there is an RJ45 socket on the board which accepts prefabricated or self-crimped UTP cables such as CAT5e, CAT6, etc. There is no real need to use any special or shielded cable or anything like that. Just standard CAT5e you can crimp yourself will do just fine. I did void CCA cable, I haven't tested with that, but yeah. Once the data signal is transported over the UTP cable, it arrives at the receiver board where it also just clicks into the RJ45 socket. I took special care to get RJ45 sockets which have the lip on the top side for ease of use. The receiver board takes the differential signal and transforms it back again to a normal signal, including running it through a 5 volt level shifter and a 33R fixed data resistor. It's best to then use 3 wire or 2 wire bundled cables going from the receiver board to the LEDs. Next to this, the receiver also incorporates fusing and a large bulk capacitor. The receiver board has a wider voltage range than the sender board for the Diff Solo series, from 5V to 24V. It also comes delivered with a 5 amp fuse standard, but if you wish to upgrade, you're allowed to use a 10 amp fuse on the board. And well, that's basically it. You can now transport your LED data signal over, well, long, or even longer or like really long or like like all of these combined and it'll still be fine <laughs> now as i mentioned these boards and the quinn led diff solar solution are releasing today normally these would be 14.99 but since this is a first release i'm lowering the price for this batch to 12.99 this has two reasons First off, I'm just excited that this is releasing. But the second is that during manufacturing of this batch, some things actually went wrong. <laughs> this will be corrected in future batches, but the issues aren't of such a big problem that this batch can't be sold. But I think it does warrant a special price this time. There are two things which make this a first edition batch. First off, the RJ45 sockets are black instead of yellow, uh, well, let me put a yellow one in here too, uh, which I used on my prototypes boards and what it should have been. This is just a cosmetic thing, but I really don't want anyone to confuse these boards with something that sends out an ethernet signal. So I thought a different color socket would be a good thing for that. Well, that failed. It's black on these boards. Yeah. Second, the RS485 chip used on this board is not the exact right type I selected. Now I've put it through many tests and it performs just fine, but future batches will switch to the chip I did select. 
The chip is a much newer model and has several improvements, including allowing for a higher data rate, up to 10 megabits, and having better built-in ESD protection. So with that in mind, but also the lower price, if you have been looking for a solution that would relieve you from worrying about the data wire with addressable LEDs, this might be it. Just like the data booster before it, it can be a good thing to include in your order to have in your toolbox if an issue with data to your LEDs pops up. Then to round off the video, I wanted to re-highlight that although these solutions use UTP cables with RJ45 plugs, the signals running on there are not Ethernet compatible. You should not insert these cables into a hub, switch, router, network card, or anything of the sort. Although I don't believe anything bad will happen, except maybe for diff power in the future, I'd really just not try it. What you can do, however, is use the Quinn LED diff solutions with RJ45 patches and patch panels. So if your company or home has a patch panel, for instance, you can use it to transport the data signal and in the future also power to where you need it in your building or home. Let's actually take a quick look at how patching using your patch panel would work. I have a dig to go here fed from a five volt uh, USB-C power supply and I cut off the normal pigtail cable and I wired it into a diff solo sender. Then I plug in a UTP cable and I plug it into my patching panel. Now what I don't show here is that I set it to the prime 2015 effect. And then we go to a completely different room in my house where I have some patches and I plug in the power supply for the diff solo receiver board. In this case, it's a 12 volt power supply because I have 12 volt uh, LEDs on this side. Although I have five volts on the sender, all those powers are independent. So you can use different voltages and different power supplies. That said, I plug in the UTP cable and voila, my data signal arrives. And now my LEDs are displaying over here instead of where, well, the dig to go actually is. Okay, enough video already. If you are interested, check out the dedicated pages now available on quinled.info and linked in the video description. They include everything from specifications, wiring guide, and well, buying options. Thank you again for watching. I have lots more stuff lined up for this year, so I'm working hard to get those releases done and get them out the door for you guys, giving you options to use in your LED setups. Thanks for watching guys and catch you next time. Bye-bye.